Okay, so in this video I'm going to review a movie I watched last night called The Joke. It's a Czech movie made in 1969 by Jeromil Giras. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. He was the director. Don't know if he was the main actor or not. He could have been. It's an adaptation of Mylon Kundera's novel of the same name, I'm assuming. It doesn't say same name, just reading this. And it's Czech New Wave and it's one of his greatest works. Okay, so I'm gonna give away basically the whole thing, so spoiler alert if you're gonna watch it. Um, it's about a man who mails his girlfriend a postcard, a political joke. Um, she was joking around, he was joking around, and he wrote a joke sending back to her, alluding that they were uh, Trotsky, supporters and I wasn't aware that that was such a bad thing in the so in the uh, not Soviet in the socialist Czech Republic I knew it was in the USSR under Stalin um, I was also surprised um, that they were supporting Soviet Union rallies in this movie um, in Prague and it wasn't like it was um, set in the Soviet Union it was set in in the socialist Republic of Czechoslovakia or whatever the official title is um, So I was surprised about that. But anyways, so he sends that postcard and he has a job at a university um, His colleagues his friends essentially um, Intercept this before it, it goes to post and They read it and they have a like a council meeting like basically a trial a hearing about it and all his friends are at this desk and they pull out the postcard they read it they accuse him, they have a big audience um, in this auditorium, um, unanimously vote that he should be expelled from the university, um, so he is, and then he's thrown out of the party, and then he is sentenced to a year of military service, where I'm not sure if it goes into more detail in the book, but it didn't go into detail in the movie about why he's further punishment uh, punished out of the military because he gets kicked out of the military and he gets sent to work three years in the mines basically like a softer version of earlier soviet gulags where he um essentially forced labor um kind of like a chain gang in in early america where he gets like a cot and a room and food and then he just works in the mine so it looked like an open pit mine, it wasn't in the ground, and they were all kind of picking away. And that was his life. I believe he had a year in the military, a year in something else, and then the three years in the mine. I don't know how they totaled it up, but it was six years of his life that were basically ruined and gone. He came back after that, and I believe he worked him his way up uh, through the ranks again, and he did get to work in a university at a lower level again in a different town i believe that hit is his arc now the movie starts off he's meeting this woman and um she shows a picture of her husband and it's one of the guys that um sentenced him and was his friend so he he thinks about revenge he's he's bitter obviously i mean that's that's a good reason to be bitter although you shouldn't hold on to resentments and this is kind of where the movie leads to in the end um because it's not all politics um it's just set in that setting it's more about an arc of resentment and and healing really so he decides that he's going to sleep with this woman because it's the wife of the man who essentially led the charge of his sentencing who was friends with him and betrayed him essentially um so he does and later in the in the film it's turned out that they're going through a divorce they don't live together anyways um his his friend that sentenced him is now a professor who kind of sleeps around like how the american professors do he has like a 20 year old girlfriend and it's kind of loose and he's kind of banging all these hot chicks and this is just his kind of housewife that he left to do the dishes with and now they're divorcing and there's no real love or revenge any any way to have there so then he ends up breaking her heart saying i don't love you it was just that well he didn't say what the plot was but she sent 
she goes away she poisons herself or at least tries to she has kind of this guy who's into her and then he decides that he's going to confront this guy at the end of the movie but to go into a bit of the the resentment and some of the um awkward parts of the movie is he does confront well not confront but he meets again the man who sentenced him and it was kind of this shallow how you have non-conversation friendly nice and niceties um small talk and he had that with this guy i believe the wife said what happened to him but he didn't mention it he didn't care he just showed his his girlfriend he was kind of laughing in his face without doing it there was there was just a subtle air to his arrogance and this man has let this resentment eat out his soul for not just the six years but now he's old it's 20 years in the future so probably 20 years or 26 years in the future it's it's been a cancer within him and he had good reason like it's he got betrayed he got screwed over and it just ate him so he ended up punishing himself more he he had this plot that went to nowhere so eventually after all this he decides to kind of humble himself and kind of let it go and there's some of his old friends playing in an orchestra with instruments i think he had like a, a flute or something that was his instrument they're like a like a typical orchestra band from a university and they're all older now and they're playing for these um I guess freshman or whatever party and then um he seems to be relaxed he seems to be smiling it's the first time he's smiling in the movie he let it go he's now with his old friends I guess he made peace with it they didn't have a choice it would have been him or them whatever he's at peace now this guy is going to come to beat him up that is wanting to gain the fav fav favor of the ex-wife that tried to poison herself that failed but he's just a kid he i thought this movie was heading towards him finally unpacking his resentment and then someone killing him i thought the kid was going to come kill him and that was going to be the end of the movie kind of like how in carlito's way if you watch that spoiler with al pacino he turns his life around and he was a criminal and now he's a club owner but he's going straight he's not selling drugs out of the club he's not doing anything and someone saw that as weakness they kill him in the end of the movie i kind of th saw that as as the way this this movie was going to end i got i i thought maybe that would even be a better ending but um a sadder ending but maybe a better poetic ending so anyways the kid comes confronts him you bastard slaps him across the face they start squaring squaring up to throw some punches um the older professor gets well he's a professor now the guy that went through the mines gets on top of him smacks him around in the face beats him up and he's basically crying and shouting at this guy you fool you're not the one i wanted to beat up and that's it ends right there doesn't explain anything more the end boom movie over that's what you're left with that's a good ending too and i guess he's a coward in a way because he's not going to confront the other guy and he still has that resentment and it bubbled up even though it seemed like he was temporarily happy it's a it's a it's a it's a wound that's never going to close it's never going to fully heal he's always going to be that guy who got screwed over by his friends it's always going to bubble up in in weird ways but the way I took it is is almost like a Christian value of of forgetting and and forgive them for they know not what they do. I kind of that was the lesson I took from the movie. It was very good. It's definitely better than these stupid Avenger movies that we're getting spammed with in the West right now. Um, and in this time period right now, this was made in the late sixties, almost seventies, but it was black and white. Um, so yeah, it was. It was a historical piece as well it's it's definitely um filmed in the iron curtain during those years it's a softer socialism than what they had in the soviet union and you get to see kind of how they lived and as, apart from this political 
persecution on this joke, which is disgusting. And I think we have some of that going on right now. Even in our democracy that says free speech is allowed, we have some of this going on right now. Um, but aside from that, they didn't seem to be living literally the exact same that we're living now. Um, even probably with the... I don't think you'd be sent, sentenced to the coal mines for saying a joke now, but there's definitely people biting their tongues in in ways that we haven't in a long time before. So I think free speech is kind of a dead thing right now, unfortunately. So I think that's another theme of this movie that's going to be important. So it's very relevant today because it ha has to deal with uh, resentments and forgiveness. It has to do with forgiving also helps you heal, not just the other person's for you as well. It's something you hear parroted a lot, but this actually breaks it down in an hour and a half, kind of showing that this basically this cancer poisoned this guy to this resentment and revenge for a long time and yeah i think it, it's good if you're interested in historical pieces as well it's not in english obviously but there's english subtitles check new wave drama it is called that's the genre and i hope everyone's having a good day as always i recommend this movie and two thumbs up for me all right peace out bye